Hi everyone, my name is Phil and welcome to Phil Does 3D. I'm a multimedia and a 3D artist and I stream live on Twitch on Mondays and Tuesdays at 5 p.m. Pacific Time in the United States. That's 10 a.m. if you're in Australia or 1 or 2 a.m. if you're in the UK and Europe. Hope everybody's doing well. Smith Berry, hey, good to see you. Uh, remember guys, if you miss the live streams, you can catch up at any time by clicking the videos tab on my Twitch channel or going to my YouTube channel forward slash Phil does 3D. Smurf says, is this where we get the free Swiss cheese? It is. <laughs> yeah, an idiot. <laughs> uh, remember to, if you want to become a Phil and join the Phil does 3D Discord server, type exclamation Discord in Twitch chat at any time or um, go to the About Me section on my Twitch channel and look for a blue graphic. <laughs> Smith says, I was told there would be cheese. There's no cheese, I'm afraid. No Swiss cheese. Or Parmesan cheese. Or any type of cheese. No cheese. Cheese-free zone. We're going to continue working on a game called The House in the Hollow. You can wishlist that now on Steam. Again, go to the uh, About Me section and look for a graphic that says wishlist the game. That'll take you to the Steam store page. Or if you're watching back on YouTube, you'll find links to my Twitch channel and to the Steam store page if you want to wishlist the game. <laughs> I'm sorry. No cheese, Murph. No cheese. <laughs> so we're working on the conservatory for the House on the Hollow game. Um, we've finished setting up the actual interior I believe well, now we just have to start making things look a bit more pretty so that's the plan of action we'll tackle this problem with the trees after we've finished setting up the building there I have an idea how we can actually maybe fix that or, or, or hide it anyway because you know how yesterday I was saying this landscape's going to be unloaded so these trees are going to disappear when the player gets to yeah, we may be able to hide it though. We'll see how we go. Oh, but first things first, uh, you know how we set up the walls, the outside walls here for this part of the building to fix the light problem with uh, Lumen and Nano? We're going to have to do the same for these corner sections here as well. So I guess we'll do that first. Because why not? Uh, you, well, yeah, Smith says just cover the dome with ivy. Yep, yeah, yeah, no, that's that is a, a valid way to do it. We could do that as well. We could completely cover. We are putting ivy up here on the dome, which will partially cover it anyway. But I think what we might end up doing is actually placing trees outside here they'll be floating in the air but again this is somewhere where the player will never reach so it doesn't matter so we may be able to hide it that way but we'll see how we go but if that doesn't work then we can certainly completely cover the <laughs> the time in ivy i mean i would like to see some glass through there <laughs> anyway but first things first we're going to jump into max and let's just isolate this piece of geometry here and we're going to have to um Put some backing on this here. So I think the easiest way, because this is such a weird shape, we might use a spline, I think. I think that's probably going to be the best way to do it. So uh, 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 uh. so let's do that. I'm just going slightly outside the edge here and then I can move it. Oh, except for this one where I forgot to go just outside the edge. That's okay. I'm going to go like uh, 
am I going to do this like that? Doesn't really matter too much again. This is just on the outside of the wall. Let's just make some adjustments now. Let me just have a look at that. And I forgot to start my music. There we go. Just going to do an extrude. And I think I need to bring. Well, oh, actually, that, that should be fine. I mean, we don't need to go all the way to the edge. We just need to block the light from coming in through the back of the arm of the mesh. Although I might just bring it over on this side a bit, I think. Let's turn on. No, 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 no. Where is it? Show end result. Smurf says, Are you going to fake the light coming through the glass? Yeah, I am. The stained glass, we're going to be faking that. Because we can't. If we if we'd made the glass translucent, we probably did, wouldn't have needed to fake it with lumen. But because we need to hide everything outside, um, yeah, we'll fake, we'll fake it. I'm just going to bring that in. Make sure we got no little areas where the light could possibly leak in. Um, Yo, what's going on? I may just bring this one in as well, I think, just on this corner. That should probably be okay, I think. And we're just going to assign that standard color we use for the other wall. What's going on? And then let's just attach the two together. Okay, short wall 
Uh, two for revision two. Okay, let's jump back into Unreal and let's bring that in. I was doing working on some plants before the beginning of the stream, so that's why I'm in that folder. Uh, where are we? Garden hallway skyline. Short hall two. I'm probably going to have to um, fix the uh, collision, probably. So let's just do this first. I'm going to open up this one. Just move that up. And I'm going to open up this one, which is the original, and this one, which is the new one. So we're going to copy the material from the original to the new one and we're going to copy the back wall material to the new one. Let's check our collision. Yeah, I thought I'd change the collision on the two so we're going to have to do that with this one as well. So let's remove the collision and add a box. a little bit too wide. Hmm, actually. So it's probably not too bad. Oh, actually no, it's too wide. Should be good. And then I think I just put one more box, yeah, one more box collision on the side. You can, like you, you guys know, you can set this sort of collision up in your 3D program. I just find using this probably just as quick and easy usually. It's just a little bit fiddly with the movement of the um, scaling. But usually it's, it's almost as fast. So. It's, this, it's really sensitive with scaling value here. Let's just move it back. And it should be good. Okay, so now we can select this piece and Replace with the new one and this one. Replace and this one. And this one. Good. 
So now we shouldn't be getting any leaks, I believe. I, yeah, because they've already that, that has a top to it, so that's fine. Okay, so let's just do a quick save. And now I can remove this one and this one and this one good uh, hang on what's going on here <laughs> Snoop says, you, uh, are you going to yeah, fake the light? Oh, that looks like a job for orthographic view. Snoop says, or a translucent shader for the collision box. Make it obvious when parts of the mesh is poking through the collision. Yeah, well, you, you're talking about when you do it in your 3D program. That's true, yeah. Um, Smurf says wireframe isn't the best idea for finicky stuff like showing if one mesh is inside another. No, that is true. If, doing it in your doing the collision in the 3D program, as you said, you can throw a shader on it. Like generally, what I like to do if I was if I was going to be doing collision in Max, say, so say we you know we're going to we're setting up our collision. We're going to be using a box. What I usually end up doing is. Um, going into the properties of the of the collision box or whatever it is you're turning into collision and I just turn on see-through and that way it's easy then for me to see if um, as you said whether the collision is actually covering the mesh or not but I tend to do a lot of collision just directly in Unreal now instead of going this route Oh, so, sorry, he's saying when you were doing it in the mesh editor, I'm just commenting out loud on things that were, oh, make it, yeah, you can't, you can't set, uh, when you're doing the collision inside, unless I'm mistaken, uh, you can't actually set a material for the collision boxes, so, yeah, it's a little bit more finicky in the editor, because, yeah, you can't set a shader, it's just a collision box. I agree though, it, it probably that would be a good thing for our Epic to add. It, just make it so that the collision boxes have some sort of uh, see-through shader on them so you can see that when the mesh is actually coming through or not. It's a good idea. It's something Epic should maybe look at. It would make life easier. But I do know a lot of people do their collision inside of um, their 3D program. Snappy Girl says, hi! Hi, Snappy Girl, it's good to see you. We're just fixing up our um, back facing for our meshes so that we fix the lighting uh, issues we had with Lumen. Well, it actually wasn't Lumen, it was Nanite. But yeah. So now we have no light leaks, which is good. Um, I may look at this dome uh, soon. Yeah, we'll come. We'll come to that in a minute. Um, yeah, I wanted to also look at this, but again, we'll leave that for the moment. So, what are we going to do? We have everything set up. Let's start. Uh, let's bring the dirt layer in for the pond, actually. So we have this um, soil. I'm just going to copy the scale. So let's um, let's bring the pond soil in. And let's wait for uh, the thing to compile its shaders. And let's paste the scale. So yeah, our pond is not actually um, going to be 
working. We're not going to be using any water or anything on it, so I'm going to put some soil in here. I'm actually going to put some plants in the pond. I'm actually going to go into unlit mode too so I can see what I'm doing here. What am I doing here? Wait. I've got to get this to line up. <laughs> Let's move it out and let's check um, Max. So we have the pond and the soil. Why is it? Did I scale that incorrectly, maybe? No, it should be. Oh, that is, that, well, I did, because it's got to be scaled to the pond value, not to the. um. Because we rescaled the pond. Duh. <laughs> and okay, let's do that again. Snappy Girl says I'm doing good. Uh, is it bad I'm ready for the weekend already and <laughs> it's only Tuesday? <laughs> no, that's not bad. That's who I feel every week. <laughs> My brain's already starting to check out because you guys know um, next week, it, I'm streaming next week on Monday and Tuesday and then I'm, I'm off until uh, around the end of July. So I'm taking about, normally I take two to three weeks for my cabin in the woods, but I'm doing four weeks this year because I need the break. It's been so much work, <laughs> so much work. So no, that's fine, Sniper Girl. I'm, I'm right there with you. Three more days to go, Sniper Girl says, yep. Uh, Smurf says, still not dead yet. Went to the flower, oh, the flower show on Saturday and snapped some cool macro shots. Going back again on Thursday and Saturday again. I, I love flower shows. Who doesn't like flowers and who taking pictures of flowers? It's very cool. You'll have to show us your pics, Smooth. Post a couple of them in the Discord, in the gallery. Because I like looking at flowers. Okay, what are we going to do next? Uh, I guess we'll bring the ivy in next. It's probably the best way to go. So, I guess we'll start, which way is the front way? This way, okay. So we'll start with this ivy, I suppose. And this one is called Corner Square Deco Ivy. Go figure. Corner Square Deco Ivy will be this one. Let me just make sure I'm in the right layer here. And this one we do want to scale up. Rotate it around. 
again going to go into unlit mode because it just makes it easy for me to place these fiddly ivy things. Just a little off on the rotation. That should be good. Uh, Snappy Girl says, Phil, are you, behaving, are you behaving and not doing 60 million cobwebs? Oh, he's cobwebs. Thank you for reminding me. I forgot about the cobwebs. We've got to put the cobwebs in here as well. 60 million cobwebs for sure. <laughs> uh, Smurf says, he's not begun to cobweb. No, I haven't started the cobwebs yet. But I, and I forgot about them actually. So thank you for reminding me. <laughs> Snappy Girl says, crap. I take away all praise I just gave. <laughs> No, we'll do the ivy and then we might do the cobwebs before I forget. So what's next? Next will be, I guess we'll do this ivy here. Oh, 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 this one here. And this one is called Garden Bed Raised Ivy. Uh, garden Beds Raised Ivy. So that'll be this one. Can't forget the cobwebs. I mean, that's the most important part. We still have to add the mushies outside and stuff as well. I wonder if I should put some mushrooms in here. What do you think? Should we put any mushies in here growing? Now, how does this sit? It sits above. So yeah, maybe we should put some mushrooms inside the building here. Okay, so we do have a large part of it that's behind that column. Looks like it needs to come back though. Which means it needs to rotate out, I think.
Chain and height wise. Height wise, we're pretty good. Okay, what's next? Next, I guess we'll do the fountain, I suppose. So we've got fountain, fountain, I've called it fountain horse, fountain horse top ivy. Fountain horse middle, fountain horse front, top. Now this is actually going to have to be scaled to the value of the fountain. Every time I always get my mass shortcut mixed up between Unreal and max. Okay, so we've got the bit that goes down and it's sort of to the side. So... The bit goes... actually it's not too bad. But no, no rotate it. Bill's <laughs> getting confused. I think. Wait. It's going to come forward. That can't be right. It comes forward and goes, say, there. And then gets rotated until it fits like that. doesn't have to be an exact copy of what we've got in Max uh, anyway. It's not too bad though. to be rotated around a little bit. We'll do this bit at the front. And it's going over that horsey and it is called Fountain Horse Front Ivy. Fountain Horse Front Ivy, which will be going over this horsey here. Tears. 
Wow, I like to make work. Uh, I like to make life hard for myself, don't I? Normally with the ivy, it's easy to place because you can see like the uh, shape that it's growing on. <laughs> but this horse piece, not so much. So it sort of hugs the bottom of the bowl. It's going to come up. Horse is completely covered in ivy. Let's go come. He is completely covered, isn't he? Yeah. Snappy Girl says, yep, all right, fine, I tossed some into this. Oh, cool. Let me have a look. Nice. Yeah, lovely shots, actually, Smurf. Really nice shots. We'll check them out just before I sign off for the day, uh, live on stream. If you guys don't want to wait for me, check out the gallery, because Smurf has posted some lovely macro photography of um, flowers. And some bees. And another insect, which I'm not sure what it is. Yeah, lovely shots though, Smurf. Really nice. Nice depth of field. Yeah, they look great. Again, I'll show them on stream just before I sign off. Okay, so I think that's about right. I mean, again, I don't need to get it exactly the same. As long as it sort of looks like it fits there. Um, it doesn't look quite right there. I 
think. You know, do I need to go back more? Maybe. Over more. Maybe it needs to be rotated a little bit more, I think. Okay, I think that's right. Yeah, that looks better. Actually, it needs to come down. I think it needs to go in. says so far I've thrown away 277 shots. <laughs> Man, snap happy. I remember when I last time I did some photogrammetry, um, it took me four hours to get all the shots that I needed. Four hours of pretty much constantly taking photographs. Snappy Girl says nice. Uh, she says yeah, not waiting for you. <laughs> That's right, you don't have to wait for me. If you jump on the Discord server, you can check them out immediately. But I will show them at the end of the stream, for a sign off. Smurf says 320 need to be sorted, 111 are sorted. Copy and save, help for it, Jay, help for it. It's good to see you, buddy, how are you? We're working in unlit mode at the moment because it's uh, easier for me to place the ivy when it's in unlit mode. So the last piece of ivy on the fountain is going to be the middle ivy and it's going to go toward the back. Middle ivy. And it needs to be rotated around about like that. Maybe a bit. I like that. Smurf says, macro is hard, bugs that won't hold still, gusts of wind, photographer's heartbeat and breathing, narrow depth of field. <laughs> uh, he says, got to burst by the shutter button. Yeah. Which is why it's uh, impressive you can get such lovely macro shots, because it is challenging doing macro, for sure. But they're lovely shots. Hellboard says, I'm okay overall, thanks. Hope you're all doing well. I'm doing well, yeah. Smurf says, means more time sorting through files in post. Now, how is this placed? So it's overhanging the edge and it's on that horsey. So... It's overhanging the edge. 
and it's on this horsey. How much of that horse is it on? Pretty much all of it, with just this little mouth showing. So that means I need to bring it forward. It needs to come. Gotta be rotated. So now it's too far over that way. Wait. Bill's getting confused. Okay, so we have that bit that comes around the outside of that. Which is this bit here. So that's going to go sort of like that which means it needs to be rotated is that right this is the, the fiddliest thing to do this fountain the eye beyond this fountain is major fiddly nightmare okay so we got those bits that go around there. And those bits through there and there. should be good I think yeah no we should be good Might just bring it down just a little bit 
Oh, no. That's not right. I know I'm quiet because I'm sort of concentrating on what I'm doing here, but... has been struggling to settle on a portfolio project lately. I keep starting new ones every few weeks without finishing the previous ones. Murph says make a spooky Halloween scene. Helpwood says we'll go easier if you have some coffee. <laughs> That's true. Let's have more coffee. Murph says you can finish it in time for the holiday. <laughs> Halloween, that's in October, isn't it? It's months away. Hellwood says, uh, not a bad idea unless I scope it too high again. I've tried for four years in a row and I have never managed. Well, if you're not feeling it, then move on, you know, do change, change it up. That's what I've always said. Oh, am I on the wrong side? Oh, I am, you know. Oh, wow. The ivy should be back here, not at the front there, I'm pretty sure. I think so. Uh, yeah, no, the ivy is at the back. Wow. No wonder it's sort of like <laughs> being a bit of a pain to line up. It's not meant to be on this side, it's meant to be on the other side. So, if we do a rotation of close to 180 degrees, we'll see how we go. It's meant to be back here on the opposite side from the other ivy. Wow. <laughs> okay, well that's fitting a lot better actually. <laughs> oh no, 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 no. Okay, that's looking better. That's what it's supposed to be. Let's do a quick save here, shall we? And I can have some coffee. Uh, Helpwood says, that's true, Phil. The problem is that my actual job is to make cars and guns. <laughs> There's some deranged combination of the two, so I kind of need to have that as my focus in my portfolio. Fair enough. Don't fill the portfolio with cars and guns, though, please. Unless, it, unless you're going for a job where that's all you're ever going to do and that's all you ever want to do. But I don't know about you guys, but I've found that if I'm making the same thing over and over and over again, it gets really boring really quickly. Maybe it's just because my attention span is very short, but I like to be able to do a lot of different things, at not just the one thing over and over and over and over again, ad, you know, ad nauseum, because I get bored really quickly. Which is why when I generally, when you guys see me working, I'll do modeling and then I'll do texturing and then I'll do, you know, I, I, I jump around quite a lot and I do that because I tend to get bored very quickly. 
So, yeah. I couldn't imagine just modeling one thing over and over forever in my career. That would drive me nuts. Which is why I suggest your portfolios be varied as part, you know, unless you just want to do cars and guns, but I, <laughs> I'd make my portfolio varied, not just cars and guns. Just in case you want to do something different apart from a car or a gun. Go and work for a company where you don't make a car or a gun. Uh, Snapper Girl says, you are the wrong side, I know. So I see you are. <laughs> I know. I am very OC, actually. Um, Smurf says, Mad Max spooky gun car. <laughs> There's an idea for you. Alpoid says, I work with a bunch of people who worked on the last Mad Max game. I worked on one of those games. So I could ask, they, actually, I, I worked on, um, what do they call it? Well, not the actual game. It was uh, like when a studio is, um, is, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? When a studio is commissioning for a game, not commissioning, when, when they're, um, I can't remember the word, but basically you create like a, um, a demo level to pitch to the, in this case, it was the director, whatever his name is, the guy that took, the director of Mad Max is an Australian guy. So you create like a, a demo level and pitch it as a games company and then if they like your work then they uh, then they'll engage that studio to do the actual game. And I worked on the pitch. Yeah, it's like a vertical slice, but a vertical slice, yeah, it, it, I guess you could call it a vertical slice. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. So yeah, just a short part of the game that you, 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 you could make for them. Snow says outsourcing. <laughs> uh, yeah, the vertical slice. It is. It's a vertical slice. And then I worked on um, this demo vertical slice of the game for Mad Max, for the Mad Max game, uh, for the, uh, the, the director of Mad Max, whatever his name is. <laughs> I can't remember his name. I mean, he, he was nice enough. He was a nice guy. He came with his personal assistant. She was blonde and thin, as like they all are. I don't know. It's, it's, maybe it's just me, but most of the HR managers I've ever met, they've always been blonde, women, thin, pretty. Um, and I remember him because his HR, his assistant, she wasn't HR, his personal assistant. She reminded me of typical HR sort of person, blonde, thin, pretty. Generally young as well. Well, you know, mid twenties say. Which to Phil is young. Um, Halfwood says blonde, thin and tits that showed up five minutes before the rest of her pretty much. Yeah. I, I was trying to be diplomatic and and yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so it says, are we in a noir now? So yeah. So who's working on the Mad Max game? What, 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 what's this? Let me go back through the chat here. Who's working? Are you? Who's working on Mad Max? Murph says Mad Max Spooky Gun Car. Oh, Helpwood says I work with a bunch of people who worked on the latest Mad Max game. The, la the latest Mad Max game actually reviewed pretty well. Like it did, it, it was released a few years ago now, but I think it, yeah, it did quite well. Wait, wait. Oh man. You know, I've got this all ass about. Like that is supposed to be over there. This ivy here is supposed to. Oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it really doesn't matter. It, but it's, it's it's backwards from the way it is at max. That's okay. We can work with it, <laughs> man. All right. Um. So next, we'll go with uh, this ivy up here on the wall, I guess. And this is called short hole wall ivy and we'll put it on this side short hole wall ivy short hole wall ivy uh, and it's got to be scaled to the wall we might actually just switch it up a bit from the original max design and put a bit more ivy around the place just because we can 
there we will. Now let me think. I think it's got to be rotated this way. I can't believe I got it all backwards. Uh, Hellpoid says you really need some copy. I know I really do. I really really do. <laughs> Let's get this squared properly. The ivy is just a bit all. And how high does it come? Okay, it's sort of down in that corner. So that's got to come up and over. Wait, that's all right. Got to come over. Wait, I'm getting confused again. Okay, so part of it actually is inside the wall. All right. reuse this ivy again and let's place it well, we, could, we could place another one on the opposite side or it might be better let's place one down here so on the opposite corner over there let's duplicate it the player will notice that we're reusing the same ivy because it's just growing on a wall so um, did I mirror it wrong we want to mirror it now on the Y Just to be a little bit different again, because we have, if the player is walking through here, we have ivy here and a lot of ivy here. And if the player is walking through this way, we have ivy here, but not a lot of ivy here. So we could probably duplicate that for this side as well. So we'll have ivy on both sides here and just on one wall over there. I think that would look good. So let's duplicate it. Uh, mirror it on the Y, uh, on the X. We're also going to bring some ivy in that we brought, that we created for the uh, outside. So yeah, I don't, let's, let's put a lit mode on so we can get a better idea. I, the player is not going to notice that that ivy is a copy of this ivy and that that ivy is a copy of this. It's With ivy, it's really difficult to, to pick up on because it's so messy. Um, Let's keep going with the ivy though, so I've got to go back into one light. Let's do a quick save. I'm 
taking it all in, baby. It's breathtaking looking at you. Uh, Helpwood says, I've been learning to rig for the past few days. It's been pretty interesting and seemingly easier than the nightmare I've always thought it was. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, software's gotten better to help you rig now these days too. They really... Is this for work, Helpwood, or is this just something that you're doing because you want to learn it? I'm just thinking they've, they've really got you doing a lot of different sorts of things if it's for work. Uh, Helpwood says, as long as the ivy doesn't have crazy eye-grabbing colours or decay, most people won't even notice, no. Smurf says, painting skin weights will never be fun, though. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I'm curious, Helpwood, is this, is it work that they're asking you to do all these different sorts of things? Like, is it the studio or are you just learning rigging, say, because you want to learn it? Because it's just, it's unusual for them to get you to do such a variety of different types of things. Uh, again, I don't really know exactly what your position is called, but like what, yeah, what your job title is, but it's unusual. Like normally rigging is the animator's job and the animation animator is completely different from a 3D artist or an environment artist or, or anything like that. It depends on the size of the studio, of course, too, because some studios do expect their people to do multiple things. Okay, so what's next? Um, I think we need the ivy that's up on the dome now. So, so if I can get into a position where I can see what I'm doing. Let's get in here. Okay, so we'll start with the ivy that's uh, running along the base of the dome, I believe. Yeah, this one. We're actually going to duplicate this a few times too. Uh, this one's called Lower Dome Ivy. From bed. On a square, on a square. Did I not bring this in? How could I forget not to to bring half of this ivy in? Oh no, here we go. Lower dome, lower dome ivy. I did bring it in. Uh, let's scale it up. And this shouldn't be too difficult to place because we can really place it anywhere. Just meant to go on the uh, upper edge of the dome. And just overhang it a little bit. Smith says, when I was in school, one of the animation students did a cool thing with their final animation where they had an old craftsman looking character fixing other characters' broken animation rig. That does sound cool. Uh, it was pretty clever and showed the, their knowledge of animation rigs and what goes wrong with them and how to fix them. It sounds like a great idea. Helpwood says, yeah, worked, uh, work related. I'm a hard surface art integrator. That's a new one, I've actually not heard that before. Uh, my main tasks are to integrate outsourced art assets into the pipeline. So if uh, OS doesn't submit a file with a functional rig, outsourcing doesn't submit a file with a functional rig, part of my task is to set up a functional basic rig before I can pass it into the, to the next person for polish. Okay. I'm just, I'm rereading the sentence. So you're, you're a hard surface art integrator. Your main task is to integrate outsourced art assets into the pipeline. I get all that. So if the uh, outsourcing doesn't submit a file with a functional rig, part of my task is to set up a functional basic rig before I pass it. Hard surfaces, rigging I generally associate with um, organic or characters. 
not hard surface. I mean, I guess hard surface can have a read. Hmm. Okay, so that well, sounds like an interesting thing to be worried uh, an interesting part of the job then, Helpwood. Helpwood says, as well as patch up any shoddy modeling or material work. <laughs> Smurf says, Helpwood is a fixer of things. That's right, he's a fixer. He fixes things. And Helpwood will know then, having, like, generally, <laughs> We try and avoid outsourcing any work uh, because generally it's terrible. I, I don't know what your experience has been, Hellforge, but uh, the studios I work at, we, we really always tend to try and um, do as little outsourcing as possible because some of the stuff you get from outsourcing companies is just terrible. Terrible, terrible. Generally, you know, basically a lot of the stuff has to be completely reworked. I mean, you may as well not have got the outsourcing company to do it, but done it yourself, you know? Would have been quicker. Do it in-house instead of getting it outsourced. Not all outsourcing companies are like that. I'm being a very... I'm, I'm generalising a bit. But a lot of them are pretty bad. At least in my experience. Helpwood says pretty much he's a fixer. Uh, Helpwood says weapon and vehicle can have oh, that's right can have rigs depending on how animation uh, how much animation they're going to have no that's true as I was saying it I realised that that's why I said oh yes yeah, some half the hard surface do do have rigs that's correct okay let's duplicate this and let's put one over on this side. So we've got one there, we'll put one, we'll do like maybe three along the top here. One, here. Let's rotate a little bit. So if we've got one there, and we'll have one there, and I guess what we'll, what we'll do here is, is to make it so that the player do doesn't notice that they're copies of each other, we'll copy it one more time, and we'll smush them together. That's a technical word for it, smush. Like we did with the um, the hedges outside, we smushed them together. Um, yeah. so that's less noticeable. That it's a copy. I just want to move this one forward a little bit. Okay. Uh, Helpwood says, I know Sniper Echo was super hyped about a rigging thing I came across a couple of years ago and that I think he started using in his workflow. There used to be a really good program if you want to, if you were doing animation and rigging there was a program called I think it's called Messiah Studio I don't it's not made anymore it was really good at rigging like it was made just for rigging just for animation uh, and I'm pretty sure it was called because actually I think I bought a license for it it wasn't very expensive uh, even though I'm not an animator um, yeah, it was really r renowned for being really good. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was called Messiah Studio. So let me just do a quick Google search. Because I don't think I've got it anymore. Messiah... Yeah, 
this was it here Messiah Studio also a 3d animation and rendering application I don't know if they make it anymore we are no longer maintained since 2013 which is a shame because it was really good anyway <laughs> getting a bit off track here Uh, so what have we got left? We've got to do the other main ivy, which is on the actual dome. And main dome ivy, there you go. Main dome ivy. I thought it had a lot more of, we can duplicate this anyway. I'm just, I thought it covered a lot more of the dome than what it, what it is. I thought I had my scale incorrect, but my scale is correct. Um, but as Smurfberry suggested, we can, we can use the dome, we can cover a lot of the dome with ivy to hide, to try and hide the fact that those trees outside are going to pop in and out when the uh, level un loads and unloads. Let me get the sort of position correctly. So we're not growing on the center of the this this ivy was actually outside of the dome. Um I guess yeah, we can we can put it outside. We, we, we'll put one outside. We'll put one inside because we're going to duplicate it compared to what we've got going on uh, in the reference level uh, scene inside of Max. So, 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 so. Side, some on the outside. Uh, it does actually cover a lot of the dome, but um, let's put one. Like I noticed, I'm noticing we've got uh, we've got a lot of ivy going on there, and we we've got some ivy going on here. We don't have much ivy here though. So what I'm going to probably end up doing is we'll duplicate one of these. But let's um. How much do I want to cover this in ivy is the next question. I don't want to cover it completely because I like the look of the sun shining through here with the um, the shadow of the um, of the dome support. And I also want, don't want to completely cover up the God Rays. Um, so I'm not sure. Bill's not sure. Well, I guess we can duplicate it, move it, see what it looks like, and if we don't like it, then we can just delete it. <laughs> Rachel, what says? Remember to save as well, so you don't have to redo everything. That's a very, very good advice right there. 
I'm just going to do a save selected as well because I always like to do that just to be on the safe side. Saving all will save it, but I always like to do save current level just to be just to be sure. Uh, Halfwood says, always interesting to hear about the older software and workflows. Back then I hadn't started 3D yet, so I have no idea about all that crazy stuff people had to deal with, getting things that I take for granted nowadays. Save twice and use the time to drink coffee. That's exactly right. I'm just going to take a, a five minute break here and have some coffee. And while I look at this and try and decide if I want to add any more um, ivy to the dome. I'm really not sure. I'm going to pull back here so we can get a bit of better overview of the room. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I, if I want more ivy on the dome. I don't want to go ivy mad. And like I said, I do want some sunlight to shine through. Hmm. Let's let's duplicate the ivy and have a look. So I'm just going to uh, duplicate that, and we can rotate it. Maybe like, maybe like that. Let's move it in. We can sort of see what's happening here with, with the um, shadow. I'm going to have to move up. See, with the ivy there, we're starting to lose a lot of the shadow we were getting from the um, supports for the for the dome. Um, I, I tend to like the way it's it's doing the god rays a little bit better with the ivy there, though. It tends it's, it's breaking it up a little bit more. But what I might do is we might rotate it around a little bit, so. We'll move it more to this side over here. So... I'll just pull it down a bit. Damn it. Every time. I think it needs to come in a little bit. think the second ivy or not we're still getting some of that shadow from the uh, support we're also getting a lot of shadow now from the um, ivy and I do like the way it tends to break up the god rays a little bit more get into position here yeah I I like the way the god rays are broken up more it's not so because you remember before it was just all all god ray. Uh, this tends to, to break them up and give us a bit more of definition in the god ray. Having the ivy there. Uh, 
Helpwood says maybe at the bottom rim of the dome. I was just thinking that. Like uh, if the bottom of the glass of the roof was broken enough, the vines would creep in and grow around the edge. That way you'd still get cool god rays and more visual interest. You're talking about running it through here. Yeah, I, 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 I was thinking that too. I haven't actually grown any, but we can, we can copy this a few times here. Might look cool. So... Maybe if we duplicate this. And we may even just scale it up a little bit more because you're not going to know, because it's way up there, the player is not going to notice the leaves are a bit bigger. Um, And we can put, we can stack one on the other as well, actually. So what we could do is we can duplicate it again. And maybe move it like. We move it in and move it down. here so I can judge how our god rays are looking as the player moves through. keep both of the ivies there you know, that one and, and this one I wasn't initially going to put that much ivy uh, on the dome but why not it makes it look much more overgrown and old so it works for what we want uh, but the only other thing I wanted to do here was there's not enough ivy here, so if I go back into unlit mode, we've got a lot of ivy going on here, but not a lot of ivy going on here. So I'm going to duplicate this. This was always my intention when I was designing it in Max. And we're going to move a copy of this one over. Yeah, over on this side. Again, the player is not going to know it's a copy. Um, and then we're also going to copy this. And we're going to put it on this side. So let's, uh, we want to mirror it in the why, I believe. Yeah, 
Okay, now we're also what we're going to do is we're going to grab I'm on the wrong site. We're going to grab uh, a copy of the Ivy here, and we'll bring that inside as well uh, as a ground covering Ivy. Um, now where do I want to put it? Yes, I think. I think, I think, I think, I think I might want to put it over here, in that corner. So if we put it down on ground level. Now let's rotate it a little bit. Move it. Oh, damn it. Let's go back into lit mode. Uh, it'll show up a lot better once we start lighting up the windows to get a bit more light going in here. Because at the moment it's, it's very dark. Because we have to imagine, you. Know, there's no light coming through these windows. The only light coming into this room is through the dome. And we've covered the dome up a lot now with ivy, so it is quite dark. But we'll, we'll fix that by adding lights to these windows here. Again, I just want to get into a position where I can sort of see my room overall. I'm going to do a save while I have a drink of coffee and have a look at what I might, might want to change. Yeah, now the ivy's going to help. I'm pointing. It's going to help. Um, hide those trees in the background but I think what we'll end up doing is I want to add a bit more color through the dome so we may we may bring some of these um these red and gold trees that we put in the driveway at, in to overhang the dome and to cover up the uh the trees in the landscape in the background that are going to disappear when that landscape unloads to try and hide that But we'll tackle that once we move back out outside. Smurf says, so the outside will unload as soon as the doors close behind you, or no. The outside will not unload until you hit one of these two trigger boxes. So we have a, one trigger box here. They're always really hard to hit to, to select. So yeah, we've got we've got a trigger box here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't select the damn thing. It's hard for you guys to see because there we go. One, there's, there's a trigger box here, and there's another one here in front of each door. It's the trigger box that will unload the landscape. The doors load the landscape. You can see the box yet. So there are two trigger boxes and they're the things that unload the landscapes. Uh, when you hit the door, open the door, that's what loads the landscapes. So uh, on click of a door loads a landscape and on passing through one of these boxes unloads the landscape. 
So the landscape will stay loaded and, until you pass through the trigger box. So basically until you get to the stairs on either side, which is where the two trigger boxes are, uh, then the landscapes will unload. I want to leave the lighting of the windows till the, uh, until we've got the, all of the rooms set up because you guys know when I was working on the, the main building, the mansion, the, uh, the Art Deco building, I always left the lighting till the last, so I always got the room decorated before I did the lighting and I'm going to continue that with this. It, it's a bit, for me, I find it's a better way to work. I can adjust the lighting to suit the, the room then. Whereas if I do the lighting beforehand and then I start finishing the rest of the interior of the room, chances are I'm going to have to go back and rework the lighting anyway. So. Smurf says, man, maybe you could just do a spherical capture of the trees and plop them on a texture outside the dome at a distance. Yeah. That's an option. Uh... It gets a bit more complicated if we want to do that though, because you can actually see the dome from outside. So if we if we did the spherical capture that you suggest, Smurf, I guess if we made it one-sided dome, then maybe it would disappear on this side. But that's an option. That is an option. I I, I think maybe having the overhanging trees might be better though. It'll add a bit more colour up here as well. Instead of it being quite so green, there'll be some red in the background. Uh, we'll do it on both sides here. So we'll have like, uh, depending on how big, uh, how much I can get the trees to overhang, either two or four trees. So two on either end, overhanging the dome. Uh, Smith says matching the trees seems like work. Uh, Smurf says, well, if you have trees on the roof, people will see for sure. Yeah, but if I have trees on the roof, th they're going to be part of the persistent level. So they'll never disappear and reappear. So if I put like, l let me show you what I mean. So if I duplicate this tree here, which is what I'm thinking of using anyway, and I bring it over. What I want to do is I want to have it overhang part of the dome. This is not a good example because uh, it hasn't really been designed for what I want in this part of the level there. So basically I want to have, I want to use the trees here to block the trees in the background. That will, that will pop in and out. So you see now we've got this red tree here which is completely blocking uh, that green tree there in the background. That's sort of like what I was talking about, what I had in mind to do. So to, to use uh, these trees to block the uh, trees in the background. Like we can still see that tree in the background there, but what I do is I put another one of these trees over here to block it. I know I have to be careful because I don't want to block completely block my god rays. <laughs> so that's something else I sort of got to be careful of. Because uh, it's already sort of blocking, partially blocking the god ray. As we can see when I delete this tree, well, I'm not blocking it, actually blocking it a lot less than I thought. <gasps> Did I delete the wrong tree? 
Ouais. Oh no, I didn't delete the tree. I deselected the tree. <laughs> okay. I'm getting my escape and my delete buttons mixed up. So yeah, that's what's sort of like what I had in mind because now you can see that the uh, we can see the tree in the background. And if I undo what I just did, we're hiding the tree in the background with this other tree. And this other tree will be persistent. It won't disappear. It won't load and unload with the levels. It'll just always be with this part of the building, with this part of the conservatory. So yeah, that, that's sort of like what I'm talking about. So we're hiding the tree in the background with another tree. And this other tree is not part of that landscape. It's not part of that landscape. It's just part of this persistent level. Uh, but we'll, again, we'll take all that once I've finished setting the room up and I've done the lighting because that'll, that'll be sort of like the last task will be to, to, to hide the exterior there. Um, how are we going for time? I don't think we need any more ivy in here. I think that's probably quite enough. Uh, what I might do now is I might, considering we're working with greenery, let's bring in the... I created... Now I, now I only created these right before I started the stream, so I'm not sure whether they're going to work or not. But I did create these little bushy tree things, which I thought might, might be cool for inside of the uh, conservatory here. I actually created two different types of trees. This is the one I just did this morning. But I actually, a while ago, created these ones as well, which I, well, I was considering bringing in. They're, they're a lot more... Let's wait for the shader to compile. They're a lot more dead looking. So these were the ones I was originally going to bring in. But then I just I thought, well, maybe something like uh, like this would be better. So let's bring them both in and let's see which looks good and which one doesn't. So let's start with, um, and, and they're for these, these raised garden beds here. So we've got four. And we'll work in this garden bed here with a bit more light. So if we bring one of these trees in. Let's rotate it around the right way. Move it into position. And of course they are wind animated, this speed tree trees. So we have that sort of greenery tree. In fact, it could probably even be scaled up just a little bit, provided it doesn't hit the top of the roof too much. So yeah, we've got that type of tree, which is, I believe it's an oak tree, it's got oak leaves. Or we can go with um, this other type of tree, which is the more dead looking one. I'm just trying to think where I can put it, where we can see it. Uh, so one like this, which again was what I originally designed for this room. Hard to see. Uh, let, let, let's <laughs> let's go into unlit mode. So yeah, th this was the sort of tree I originally envisioned for this building. I might just pull it down a little bit because it had these really wacky roots that sort of I thought might be cool to overhang the actual garden beds. A little bit. I'll just pull it down again. Just want to make sure it doesn't hit the roof too much. So 
So I don't know. I'm not sure. You know, I'm just going to remove this tree and put... Um, I made two versions of this, this sort of gnarly looking tree. So that we can duplicate them around without them being noticeably the same. If I copy just the same one, people would notice. So I made two, and with two people are less likely to notice. So I'm not sure. Which sort of tree do you think looks better? Again, difficult to tell till we have the final lighting in. You're sort of like going to have to guess what it looks like a little bit. But. I just, when, when I designed these trees, they were sort of like a little bit creepy looking compared to every other tree we've got, which is like just stately tree. Uh, these ones look a little bit more creepy with the roots, which was why I thought they might be cool for in here. But I don't know. <laughs> Copy and save. Yeah. <laughs> Good idea. Let's, um, We'll duplicate these trees to the other side and have a look at the, what they all look like together. So, um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to think of the best way to do this. Yeah, I'm going to make a copy. Copy of this one. I feel like I'm going to sneeze. You know that, that tickle you get in your nose? Oh, for this side of here. This one, is that correct? Actually, I want to move this one over here. And I want a copy of this one. Or down here. Again, I know it's very dark, so it's difficult to see at the moment. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think I actually prefer these gnarly trees. We can use the other one somewhere else. These decorative smaller trees somewhere else. I guess. Initially I was um, planning on having trees that sort of grew right up to where the dome is. So they fill pretty much the roof with greenery, but after adding the uh, extra ivy, I don't think we need it. My main concern with this room was the conservatory was that it was going to be too, it was looking too yellow. I said to you guys uh, last week, uh, so, and I knew by adding the ivy would, that would take some of that away. And also we added the stained glass windows helps to add a bit of color. So that knocks the, the yellow back a bit. Um, so I don't actually think we need trees growing up to the dome because the ivy makes it green enough. So I think I prefer these gnarly trees. Like I said, they look a bit more creepy. Let's do a save and I can have a copy. And save current. Because two saves are better than one, even though it's unnecessary. <laughs> I still do it anyway out of habit. Um, I created some tulips I want to bring in too, but I think we'll do that next week. Uh, so we need to still do the cobwebs. I haven't forgotten about the cob forgotten about the cobwebs. We've got to add the cobwebs. I want to add um, broken glass to the ground. I want to add some fallen leaves on the ground in here as well. I want to add the tulips for a bit of colour. They're like a pink tulip. Light pink tulip. And I think I've also got Bird of Paradise, yeah, that I want to add to a plant that is. Again, it's a speed tree plant, so it does move in the wind. So we've got that and then we've got the um the chalks. Three different varieties of tulips, one that's completely open, one that's partially open, and one that's closed. All using the same texture. Uh, I did actually create a fern as well, but I don't think I'm actually going to use it. It's this thing here. Yeah, I don't think I'll use this. We could probably use it somewhere else anyway. Oh, and I created um, cypress trees. These are going to go outside, actually. Not inside here. Oh, we have to remember to put the uh, outside um, turrets in as well. Actually, let's do that now. So I'm just going to jump outside here. Um, what is that? Oh, that's the back of the column. We may need to, although no, it's looking all right. I'm thinking, oh, I was just concerned that we may get light leakage, but it looks okay. Uh, we're going to cover that up with uh, some trees through here anyway. But let's get the turrets in. Turrets in. So we have one turret on each corner. I think that's right. Okay, so the turrets basically go on the four corners of that. So they come in here. Okay, 
So we've got one there. Okay, we should be able to see those I think through the uh, through the glass. Again, I'm just going to double check. And that's correct. And turret, on, turret on either side. Make sure the position correctly. Yeah, I think this one needs to come in. to come out. Okay. Just wanted it to look even through the glass, that's all. Okay, let's do a save all. And save current. And I think we might leave it there for today, guys and girls. I do want to thank you though for hanging out with me, for being here. <laughs> uh, I'll be back on again on Monday next week. Now remember next week it will be the last streams and before I go on my mid-year break. So Monday, Tuesday next week are the last two streams uh, and then I'm back around the end of July. So um, yeah, I'll be back on Monday next week, 5pm. You're quite welcome. Thanks for hanging out with me guys and thanks for being here. Um, you guys have a great weekend. Uh, take care and I will see you all on Monday next week for our last two streams before I go on break. Have a great weekend, guys. See ya.